Good day, viewers, and welcome to today's Sport Trap Show. I am your host, Brian Monango, updating you on the latest sports news. Uh, While well, Beatrice Masalingi makes headlines after winning a 300 meter race in the second fastest time ever recorded in a uh, women's sprinting. And uh, goals galore in the FNB Women's Super League that kicked off this weekend, as we saw uh, more than 10 goals scored over the course of three games. Fantastic indeed. Well, let's kick, uh, let's kick start today's show with the hit list. The Tour de Ventuk road racing, a road cycling stage race was completed from Thursday until Sunday uh, in and around the capital with three professional men's team from South Africa competing. Uh, While well, Namibian champion rider Drikas Kutsia produced an immense performance to win his second Pukovic Megaville Tour de Ventuk. After some of his teammates uh, in the colors of Simon Storm, powered by Hollard, had to withdraw from the race. While well, Kutsia also won the King of the Mountain Stages, uh, the women's title was won by Melissa Hens of Namibia, ahead of teammate Henri Krugel presenting uh, Simonis Stone powered by Hollard. Well, the Namibian Football Association Women's Super League sponsored by FNB Namibia and uh, it got us underway with around one. Last Saturday, three matches were played at the NFA Technical Center Field in Katutura, where Tura Magic delivered the biggest score of around one, beating Rightway FC by a whooping eight goals to one. Well, uh, earlier, Fiola uh, Viete scored a hat-trick of goals in Beauties FC, equally convincing win by seven to two goals against Okanja FC, while the V-Power Angels also made a winning start to their campaign, beating the Nast Babes five goals to nil. Well, we have a highlight package that we compiled for you. Please do enjoy. In our second game of the day, that was the Nast Babies against the Power Angels. The Power Angels, a very strong, strong team, and showing why they are very strong. Scoring that is from the first half, first minutes of the game, already leading by two goals to nil, and that is how strong they were. Starting firing on all cylinders all guns blazing there i don't think the nas babies knew what hit them before it was already three nil two nil the score line was just happening and it just proved difficult a difficult first half that is for nas babies who were just not getting the rhythm correctly a goalkeeper that is not a natural goalkeeper displaying that he she is not a natural goalkeeper and that proved very difficult for her in that first half. The position was dominated, that is by V Power Angels. Nice through ball there and another goal slotted home from close range. Easy peasy, that is from V Power Angels. They really took this game, the bull by its horn. Another beautiful run across the defenders and a pile driver into the top corner wonderful stuff here you see again just gliding through the midfield as easy as it could get but here look at that mistake from the goalkeeper conceding the fifth goal in emphatic fashion um, she would be disappointed with that one there and then this this prompted that is nas babies to change a goalkeeper and that was quite impressive after that because they did not really have to concede a lot of goals again although that they tried some efforts on target themselves it was also very difficult for them to come from behind as they were rattled earlier on they just couldn't do anything and V Power Angels was just dominating this one from the onset. From the first whistle on Jesse number six there, another good save by the goalkeeper who came on. She really tried her best. 
even though that V Power Angels were just dominant in that regard. You can see there, V Power Angels getting a penalty that is in the second half to make the score lines almost six and a good save straight into the keeper, which was a wonderful save to make knowing the mistakes the first goalkeeper make in, made in the first half. Another chance there that is for V Power Angels and a block, a straight interception which almost led to a goal. You could see struggling with clearing their lines there was proving very costly for them. Unable to get out of their blocks here. Nas Babies having a few chances but really half chances not enough to rattle or shake the defense that is of the power angels as the match drew on there a couple of free kicks cagey positions difficult for the referee as it was stoppages all over players fatigued difficult to pull ahead and some still had the energy and you could see there another important save that was from the Nas Baby's goalkeeper. A set piece, a rare set piece that is for Nas Baby's trying to probably pull one back and over it went, no rattled, no post shaken or anything. So it was another chance wasted. As you can see there, again, V Power Angels, the team in black dominating the proceedings again here with another attack and a good save from the goalkeeper who made sure that the scoreline at least remained a bit respectable in terms of what the club has done. Welcome to the third and final game of the day. That was between Tura Magic and Right Way. Tura Magic doing all the things right in that game. Although Right Way trying also hard to keep them at bay as early on. But Tura Magic just proving why they are a class apart with their top players. Fredericks there with a skill and out it went. Another ball. Fredericks again here a challenge there by the right of way player on that is on Kober here another position play here from Tura Magic FC pushing on and this was the cross intercepted great tackles there but a nice shot uh, that is from Tura Magic to get the first goal of the match. Indeed, this was going to be an opener to many that came here. You can see the tussle there, right way, trying to find their way, but going the wrong way. It was indeed the story of the day. Tura Magic FC and right way FC. It was all mixed up in the middle of the park there. A nice opportunity, but Emma Naris of Tura Magic's proving why she is one of the best in the country. Tura Magic's side star started filled with brave gladiators players dominating from the start. And another set piece here, wonderfully taken by that is Lovisa Mulunga, the skipper of Tura Magic FC, making no mistake here. And here you see Tomalina Adams on the attack, but beautiful tackles flying in there showing how competitive the game was it was indeed a competitive game at the start before Tura Magic really pulled away another throw in there as you can see Cooper with the shot and just over the bar and there it was a corner kick after a penalty attempt um, from the Tura Magic ladies 
and so the corner came in another close range header which was ruled offside there that is Tomalina Adams ruled offside here right way trying her their best Tomalina Adams floating through a through pass there once again another beautiful chance gone backing with that is Hikwam scoring another important goal there here they go again Millicent Hikwam and a strike that is from number 14 Yvonne Kuoper uh, this time around making no mistake as he puts that one past the goalkeeper here it was here yeah, a miss kick from the defender and a clearance of the line quite pleasing there quite pleasing to watch from the players and another corner kick there they were coming and coming and that was causing problems to right way trying to stop the most experienced players that ply their trade mostly um, in the Nami Women's League but that have also been part of the Brave Gladiators for a number of years. Some of these players are players that have gone on to play abroad as well. That is why they have proven to be difficult. That is for right of way, quite an inexperienced team. And here you go. That is Tura Magic Ladies again in possession, pushing on, making sure, attacking. That was the order of the day with the side trying its best and another tackle there from right of way players under very difficult circumstances of attacks uh, that is by the Tura Magic ladies again another shot there just wide of goal that was Millicent Hikwam again another tech Well, as you can see there with the highlights, lots of goals uh, were scored. As you see, Tura Magic putting on a world-class performance and scoring seven goals in their first game of the uh, Super League, that is. Well, Namibian sprinter Beatrice Masalingi produced a sensation early season run in Pretoria on Saturday, winning a 300-meter race in the second fastest time ever recorded in the women's sprinting. Well, uh, Masilingi's impressive run for a time of 34.60 seconds is only overshadowed by Sean Miller of the Bahamas, uh, the two-time Olympic champion who ran a 34.41 during 2019. Masilingi's early season form seems to be a promising indicator on her way to uh, possible participation in the World Athletics uh, Diamond League later this year, as well as the World Championship in Budapest, Hungary in August. While the Jack LaRue Fast Five netball competition strived for inclusivity and gender integration in sport, women uh, traditionally dominate uh, the netball field that is. Well, it was hosted at the Trasco United Field in Ventuk on Friday and Saturday. The competition featured 36 matches and the Purple Bullets were crowned the winners. We caught up with United's head coach and this is what she had to say. My name is Enrica Palmer. I'm currently the head coach at United Netball Club. So United was the main organizer of this event, the Jack LaRue Fast Five event. Uh, United has been in netball for many, many years. Um, yeah, and like I said, we, we thought it good to have this Jack LaRue Fast Five event in memory of, of Jack. Okay, so the one thing we did notice was there was an integration of both men and women. Could you kindly just explain that to us? So the reason for the integration of men is simply because uh, we do not currently have a league for men, a uh, netball league for men in Namibia, and we thought it good that men, they really want to, to be part of netball, and um, they are having so much fun when they play, and because our main aim of this event was simply to have fun, we, we thought it good to, to, to have them involved. Okay, how do you think the players coped in this extreme heat? Oh, I think all of us are Namibians, so by now we're used to the sun. 
yes, it was hot, but what we did is um, we ensured that the games were not that long and we also brought in the power play where we play a certain song and the points double. So um, just, just to create that um, fun part and not to let them focus on the heat too much. Okay, overall would you say the activity was a success? Was the game a success? Overall I think this event was a huge success. So this is one of our highlights on our calendar. It's the second time that we're hosting this event and um, we almost doubled our, our teams that entered for the year and I'm sure next year they will be even more. Well, we now cross over to the weekend drop. Well, the first action of the local rugby season got underway with the Trasco United 10 aside tournament sponsored by Venduk Draft and Brand Plan. Uh, it was a good day for the first team of FNB Kudus, who took the Premier League division with a 10 21 17 win against FNB Wanderers in the final after each side had scored three tries. Hosted, uh, Host Club United won the reserve division with their second team, beating Kudus by 19 to 12. Well, uh, in the women's title, also st stayed with the United after an extra time result of 10 to 7. Both sides had scored one and converted one try during normal time, and it had to go to extra time. Well, let's take a look at the highlight package. Today's edition of the Weekend Drop, we take a look at the highlights of the 10-a-side rugby tournament that took place where we had the Kudus taking on Wanderers. Well, uh, a beautiful game indeed that beautiful it finale. was. <laughs> beautiful finale. Of course, Kudus taking the lead in the beginning, Wanderers taking the lead, and then Kudus taking the final, final lead, which made it amazing because Kudus, all the way from the coast, took that one, and I just loved it so much. Such a thrilling final. Well, if we look at the tries that were scored, I was talking earlier to a friend of mine. Yeah. I told her the only reason Kudus <laughs> won this uh, game <laughs> was because of the number 20 Let's who played for Grootfontein previously. Look at that. He, he skips, he gives the assist and for the goal that was scored. <laughs> And he did that twice. But as much as it's from Crossfontein, let's let's not let, let's not let's not let that be the reason why he won. He won because he plays for Kudus. Had he been part of Crossfontein, then he would have been part of the losing numbers. So let's just give it to them. Let's give credit <laughs> for Crossfontein. Well, yeah. as you can see here, Wanderers in uh, coming from behind, trying to cut Ooh. through the defense but as they pass the ball. Mm. Beautiful ball goes. played. Iambo. Iambo Number actually scored that one, yeah. but it was ruled off. Ugh unfortunately, and that gave them hope. Wanderers actually thought they could come back in this game but because they played beautifully, but Kudus held on and they won the game. Yes, Strong. I'm actually happy they made their match. Kudus, I mean, Wanderers learned something new. They need to go home and regroup. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, 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 it's actually good to see someone else win for a change. Yeah. We look Such at this goal again. Finale. That's where they scored one of their goals. Beautiful try indeed. One of their tries, man. One of their tries. Let's leave goals. We already spoke about soccer. <laughs> uh. As you can see, the Wanderers getting on the score sheet again. Yes. Well, but of course, let's take a look at Kudus as they get their The awards. Premier League winners of the 10 aside tournament. Kudus, that is. Yes. As they won the game 21 to 7. Well, as you can see, the beautiful highlights from the final game where we saw Kudus beat Wanderers. And yeah, we move over to the youth segment of the show, Spotify. Well, on the 17th and 18th of February, Hockey School of Excellence in Valfas by Private School hosted a two coaching clinics 
uh, to 22 coaches from seven different schools. It was the first time ever for Valfas Bay to receive coaching clinics for outdoor hockey since the installation of the new artificial turf last year. The aim of these coaching clinics were to teach the coaches new astro skills and techniques of the modern hockey. Uh, the, coastal co uh, the, the coast now has two artificial turfs, one in Valfas Bay and one in Swakop, and they will be hosting Two important school competitions, coaches are now more confident to prepare the players for the 2023 competitions with new skills acquired. Well, up next, we have Ari Ohat with International News. Stay tuned. Good day everyone, time for international sports news, starting off with cricket news. The T20 Women's World Cup continue in South Africa. It's coming up for semi-finals on uh, Thursday and Friday this week. And uh, it is in Group B, England and India. That's through to the semi-finals already. It will, uh, England will play either South Africa or New Zealand. Uh, that uh, will be determined on Tuesday when South Africa play Bangladesh. If South Africa beat Bangladesh in their last round-robin game, they will play England in the semi-final. Uh, but if South Africa lose to Bangladesh, it will be New Zealand that will face against England. The other semi-final, it will be India that will play against Australia. The semi-finals will be Thursday and Friday in Cape Town. The final will also be in Cape Town. That will be played this coming Sunday. Staying with cricket, uh, Test Cricket 2 test matches concluded um, and it was uh, for in New Zealand a good result for England. England that beat New Zealand in New Zealand in the first test by 267 runs in the first five-day test. And also a good result for India. That game is played at home for India. The second test, it is India that beat Australia by six wickets. They lead that series now by two tests to nil. Going on to rugby news, um, and it is this weekend the Six Nations that will continue. It will be Italy that will host Ireland, and then also France that will host Scotland, and uh, then the big game, Wales, that will host England. But uh, Wales-England game is in jeopardy in a way. Uh, there's even threats of a strike by players of Wales. That's all got to do with player contracts that's not concluded. Um, that's for the four franchises, the Dragons, Cardiff, Ospreys and Scarlets. Those are the four franchises in Wales rugby. These four franchises also not doing well at the moment in, in the United Rugby Championship. Many of the players' contracts come to end at June and uh, those new contracts have not yet been confirmed for players. So um, it is the Professional Rugby Board of Wales that needs to confirm that still. Wales Rugby Players Association said that uh, they might even strike for this coming Saturday's game when Wales host England. That will be unprecedented, never happened before. But former captain Alan Wynne-Jones, he said that that would be the last option for players. Hopefully they can resolve it and that uh, the contracts will be uh, in place uh, before Saturday's game when uh, Wales host uh, England, that will be in Cardiff. Continuing international sports news with tennis news, and it is Carlos Alcaraz, the former world number one. He's just 19 years old. He came back from four months of injury. Successfully so, he won the Argentinian Grand Prix that was on clay. He beat the Great Britain's Cameron Norrie in the final by 6-3 and 7-5. He was out for four months with injury, but still is number two in the world at the moment. He was overtaken by Novak Djokovic as the world number one. Djokovic that won the Australian Open a few weeks ago. He is currently number one in tennis. Also on the men's ATP tour, it was the ABM Anbro tour uh, that was tournament that was played um, in uh, Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And there it was Daniel Medvedev of Russia that won. Um, he moved up from number 11 in the world now to number 8 in the world. He beat Yannick Sinner in the final. Sinner also moving up two places to number 12. The Tsitsipas still number 3 in the world after the rankings came out. Closing off today's international sports news with golf news and staying with world rankings, it is new world number one in golf as well. It's John Rahm that is the new world number one after winning the Genesis Invitational on the PGA Tour. He was uh, number three before the tournament started. He overtakes Scotty Scheffler that uh, finished number uh, 12, uh, tied for 12th in this tournament. And uh, Scotty Scheffler of the USA is now number two with uh, Rory McIlroy number three in the world at the moment. A great a few months for John Rahm of Spain. Um, it was his fifth win in his last nine competitive starts worldwide. Um, so the 28-year-old is world number one again. 
also Tiger Woods that played in the Genesis Invitational. He finished the way down, but he did make the cut. And uh, he indicated after the tournament that he felt good um, health-wise. He's got a leg injury still that he, had, uh, that he sustained from a motor car accident. And he said that he'll just play a few tournaments in the year, but he'll definitely play all four major tournaments. His next tournament probably will be the Masters in April, where he's a five-time champion. That's international sports news for today. Hope you have a great sport day and we talk again tomorrow. Goodbye. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. Sport Rep will be back tomorrow at the same time and same place. Goodbye.